we simply call this segment Capital Spotlight because we take five minutes before a session of the General Assembly and discuss with uh, one of the members some of the things they've been working on and how it might impact us here in the Ocean State. It gives me a great deal of pleasure to welcome back a woman from the Rhode Island House of Representatives. We've talked to many times, the Honorable State Representative Teresa Tanzi. Representative, it's good to see you. Thank you, Dave. It's good to see you as well. You know, um, we had you on um, straight from the gavel a few months ago, and we talked about this legislation regarding drones. Now, when people hear the term drones, they think of military and they think of warfare, uh, but you are approaching the use of drones in a different way, and you have legislation that's dealing with that. Bring our viewers up to date. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, the use that I'm most interested in is that of law enforcement, and um, they. this is a new technology, an emerging technology, and the cost of it has really dramatically come down. So I think while maybe two or three years ago people would have said drones, what are they? Um, you know, they're too expensive, they're something that only the military would be using. Now when it's possible to purchase one um, at $350 at the outlet mall, um, it's becoming much more um, understandable that the police are inevitably going to want to adopt these policies to make their lives easier. Well, and, and again, when you talk about the prices dropping, I don't know if this qualifies as a drone or not, but I was in a shopping mall recently where there was a kiosk with a guy selling these helicopters that were remote controlled. They had built-in video cameras on them that could transmit to your laptop and who knows where a person could take one of those, not to mention law enforcement, just your next door neighbor. Exactly right. It had four propellers on it, I'm guessing, and not propellers that we may have envisioned in this direction, but more of this direction. Sure. They have amazing capabilities now, and they're widely available. Well, I remember you were uh, subjected in uh, a piece in conjunction with the Providence Journal where you let them snoop on you. Yeah. And it was for a story, a feature story, they wrote about this topic, and you were astonished at what they could see and what they learned. It was one of the most remarkable experiences that I've had. Uh, I had put the legislation in last year. I had some familiarity with them, but I'd never seen their capability. And again, this was one that was purchased for $350 at a mall. And um, it, it had the ability to fully watch me throughout the day as I went about my business. And there were times where um, I had no awareness of them being outside my window. And there was one scene in particular outside my bedroom where they were hovering, and I really, truly did not know that they were there. Now, I would presume that you're going to ask law enforcement to follow the same kinds of procedures when they seek a wiretap or something of, of that nature, that they get uh, approval from a court before they use anything like this in evidence gathering. That's my guess. That's exactly right. So we have the existing framework of the wiretap, and we're inserting the new technology into that. See, and, and again, you know, that's really courageous legislation, Representative, because because the easy thing for somebody to say watching this right now is, well, if you don't have anything to hide, why would it bother you? Because we're asking for open season on tyranny. Um, it's the price you pay for living in a democracy, and you want people to play by the rules. And now, when we've learned some of the things that our federal government may be doing to us in the way of data keeping, record keeping, eavesdropping, I think a lot more people are a little sensitive about how much of our personal information is being disseminated to the government. That's right. I think uh, Snowden and the NSA scandal that broke over the summer has really helped uh, raise awareness um, on this issue. And then Amazon. Amazon has put forth a proposal to use drones so um, to do delivery. So, uh, you know, from the bizarre to, you know, the obscure, um, the uses of drones are becoming much more um, open. You know, and again, I think we really have to, and I applaud you for looking at the issue of privacy, because right now, credit card theft, identity theft, is now superseding all the B&Es in the United States of America in terms of the amount of dollars that are confiscated through illegal means from somebody stealing information that is personal and private to you and using it for unsavory, you know, for unsavory things. Right, that's true. I mean, you know, the law enforcement piece, um, which is the piece that I cover in the bill, um, you know, it, it looks to um, create a sense of um, order 
uh, for their use, and um, that's really what I'm going forward. Uh, the one thing that I've heard uh, major concerns about during this time period has been people worrying about search and rescue. You know, these are emergency type situations where people feel that the response needs to be immediate, and there is a, um, a provision within the bill that allows for law enforcement to go ahead and to go forth and do the search um, for the lost person or the person in imminent harm's way, um, and then go back and report to the judge. And good for you, because uh, that's good common sense. And, and again, I really uh, uh, salute you for this work, because it, it's very important. And this gives an idea, too, of what governments are going to have to do as technology continues to get more uh, available, accessible, more affordable. And uh, it's very interesting. In 30 seconds, where does the legislation stand right now? It has been introduced. We'll have a hearing in House Judiciary. I'm still having talks. I need to speak to um, Justice Gibney in order to get her um, feedback on the procedure that we've established. Um, I need to continue talks. I just had a meeting with the state police with Colonel O'Donnell. And um, we're working with the hobbyists to make sure that their rights are protected. And um, I am looking you know, into the possibility of civilian use. It's not something that I initially had thought about. But um, you know, people, I think, are more worried, and rightly so, about the average person using went to snoop than they would the police. The police are not, you know, by nature going to be using these things for snooping. Um, so it, it's opened up a whole new world. Well, it's, it, it's very interesting and, and it seems like you've, you've thought of uh, just about everything. <laughs> Thank you so much for talking to us today. It's interesting legislation. My best to you and your colleagues in the House. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And of course, we could not do it without you. Thank you so much for watching for Capital Television and Capital Spotlight. My name is Dave Barber.